snubs, welcome to another edition of The Beaten Path. For several years now, I've been exploring this winemaker's work and have really come to appreciate the quality, execution, and complexity of his wines. And I recently made the trip down to Chile to see for myself where who was making these wines, where they were coming from, and experience their story firsthand. I made a trip down to Chile and had the opportunity to spend some time tasting and getting a tour of the facility with none other than Felipe Toso, the head of winemaking at Ventisquero Wines. He's a founding winemaker and together with his team have been building up this production facility, this operation for over two decades now. It was really an eye-opening experience and I got to see firsthand how they constantly challenge the norms and think outside the box while staying faithful to core principles of winemaking. It really gave me a good understanding for the wines I had come to appreciate the last couple years and I'm really happy to take you along with me today. So we're going to get a tour of the facility, a casual tour of the facility with Felipe and Catalina, and uh, as well as the, uh, the Angel, as well as Angel, um, who is the viticulturist at Ventisquero Wines. We're gonna go through the cellar and we're gonna go through the production facility. We're gonna also visit the team and I'm going to sort of just let you come along with me and, uh, and sort of eavesdrop on the many random conversations we had about their wines. And one of the uh, good parts, the nice parts about this tour is we get to interrupt Felipe's Friday schedule. So on this specific day, Friday, Felipe had, was doing uh, barrel was doing barrel tasting of their Cabernet, their Grey Cabernet, which is an incredible value uh, for what you get for the price. I always wondered, I often wondered, what is it about that wine and how can you produce a wine at considerable scale and still retain such complexity and nuance? And I was able to explore that today and see, get a glimpse into his technique and um, his process. So thank you, Felipe, for taking me along. Be sure and stay till the end, where we'll take a glimpse at, as Felipe calls it himself, one of his craziest projects so far. Um, we're gonna look at the third edition of this wine, the Viognier Solaire. Right here I have with me the fifth edition and that Felipe was kind enough to send me back home with. And uh, we'll also be doing a look um, on this and a separate segment just for this. Um, I have more content uh, specifically about this wine and the story and the process behind it. So without further ado, let's get started wine snobs. This is our vineyard from Casablanca. We'll make a, our, in Mendizquera, we'll make a reserve of Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, Pinot Noir. Here is Wasco, where we make Tara. Trinidad is this vineyard. This is where we are right located now. This is in Leyva. This is near just, that's the, the ocean here. And this is where you were, La Lavaderia. And this was an old vineyard that we don't have anymore. This, this is... Now, now we're gonna put Patagonia. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've been hearing so much about Patagonia. <laughs> and here's where we are. Okay, so this is where we're going to have again. But at the Gama, if you see where we are, you have to cut here. Yeah. Because this is about uh, 500 miles, 600 miles to the north. So this is where we are right now. Okay. Okay, you just came from La Roleria. Yeah. Okay, that is there. Those are the mountains that yeah. you, that's the hillside, the hillside. We have a small vineyard that we don't 
We don't manage anymore, but we still buy some grapes that used to be ours, but now we, we gave it to the fruit area yeah. for a long time ago. This is where we are right now. This is the other vineyard, it's very coastal. So if you see from here to here, we're very near to the yeah. coast. So that's Casablanca near to the coast. This is absolutely on the coast. And here we're a little bit, this, this, is, this distance is uh, 20 miles. And you know, looking at the topology, you can see a corridor, like yeah. that marine layer. Can get to that to the Absolutely. vineyard. That's uh, you, this is how you understand it. Oh, yeah. Here in Apalta, here, here in Apalta, Apalta is here. Here it gets like that. Yeah. So here you don't have the influence of the coast. Yeah. Here we do have the influence, and it looks very like similar almost. Yeah. But here we're just there. Yeah. Okay. So from here to there, uh, to the coast here is the coast is like there. It's about uh, about 50 miles, and here's just 20. So even though it looks similar, that we're all in, in the land, here we have a coastal influence. This is on the coast, on the coast, at the Gama, on the coast. Okay, so everywhere at the Gama, Casablanca and Leida are coastal vineyards, and then Trinidad, Maipo are not coastal vineyards. Wow. Okay. And this is how you look at the map, and the big map of Ice of Chile, that's a, to make it wider. Yeah. This is where we are, yeah. And this is where the wine is... Here, that's where we are right now. So that is the distance to the Wasco. Wow. Okay, not, so it's very about the distances. In Patagonia, <laughs> in in Patagonia and, and if you see Patagonia, no, no, you can do it in a day, but... And if you go to Patagonia, we don't... If yeah. The distance from here to here, yeah. we double that distance again. <laughs> so it's... It's really like from here to here, that's the distance where we are from here to the Badawani. Wow. Oh, that's a lot. You can go wow. by car in a day. No, no possible. No. But it takes, it's it takes an expedition to go down every time. <laughs> because it's also, and do you, it's one of the most beautiful like areas and of Chile to me. So, and do you do the production of those grapes here? Everything we do here. So, so I'm a winemaker so that I like you have to everything try. here. This is my house, yeah, here's my your kitchen. people, yeah. my <laughs> kitchen, because yeah. when we start to divide ourselves, it gets very complicated, a new team. Yeah. So and if, if you would tell me in the future, my my belief I would love yeah. to have a winery in about that. Uh, As about winery yeah. independent to yeah. to get out of a little bit here. But really yeah. Do I need another winery? No. no because I have to be there. What is it? That's how it's Gonzalo is in charge of the barrel team. Um, and we're going to work today a little bit. So you will taste with me those barrels. I'm making the Carmenere Grey blend. Mm. So we're going to be tasting barrel by barrel. You'll see the difference by barrel by barrel. Awesome. Oh, that's that's how Okay, if the audio is Temperature control, as you see, yeah. humidity, you can listen it, mm -hmm. and temperature control. The idea here is to have the temperature control around 15 Celsius degrees. That would be 50 something. Yeah. 55, I think. Yeah. Depends on summer years. In the winter, we're cold, cold, colder than that. Yeah. In summer, we're regulating. We're going to reinvest this equipment. It's working very well still yeah. but they're 22 years old wow so we're going to replace them for new equipment new systems see, over there you can see how the you see the, the fog there is yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so you can feel the like yeah. 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 right now we should be like 75 percent density operation. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Over there we have the office. So we're, we're gonna go past there and then we go to office. So this is all where we have all our this is where we have all our filters. 
We have one, two, three filters online. Here's where we do the bend. Small lock, that, that's a double tank. Big lock, medium lock, smaller lock. All this area is preparing the wines to bottle. So this is all the area to prepare the wines to bottle. From here down is below the ground. So if you see, you came up and you came up. Yes. We're like in the middle of a couple of hills. Now when we get outside, you will understand. But here below yes. is below ground. Ah. So we made a big hole. Wow. You will understand it. But, but, well, it's very cool temperature, the wine, you see? Yes. Yes. Great temperature. Yes. You don't know how high it is. Yes. This thing, this wine was built 22 years ago. And you see how clean yeah. Modern still is. Yeah. Okay. Um, wow, just the maintenance alone, just keeping everything. Damn, this is like a whole army. <laughs> we're, we're very efficient. Huh? We're very efficient. Wow. Uh, so you see, well, this is another filter that we have in the middle where we keep all the hoses. Yep. And I use uh, right now. We're, we're, we're already fixed, we're already working, we are already thinking in vintage so that we're finishing the maintenance of all our equipment to for the vintage. In all this area here is gravity reception, hand selection. So this is where we make the, the Keulat in gray. And then we're gonna show you, but we don't have it on this time working. All what is on clay, pangea, and ta, we do it in a, a small wine unit that, that we even didn't build. It's like a garage wine unit we made. Yeah, yeah. We can do pangea there and enclave and everything there, but then I ask for even smaller tanks, and we do a lot of things by open tops. I remember you, you mentioned how, that you like to send your winemakers to the Tara project exactly. just to go back to the basics. Exactly. And, that's why we, and, and because of that, that other part of the winery is incredible today, especially 200 tons. A year and you'll see it's a small place and we call it the experimental and garage wine okay, here you will see so this is all gravity reception here so we're over a huge mezzanine this you remember you went to did you see the montes winery yes you saw that they would take everything from the roof yes well this we are our, we are we, we don't need a roof because we are on yep, ground the plateau. Oh, yeah. One of the ideas when they built that winery yeah. was this winery. And there's another winery that they also saw that is uh, the California winery. Oh, that is uh, the who knows winery. It's called uh, in Napa. Napa. Uh, yeah, the who knows winery. It uh, was working actually with flowers. No, but, 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 but in Napa, the Napa one. Galo, I don't know. No. Kenda. No. Oh, Chiquita, Chiquita. Very high end wines. Just one wine. Yeah. So, Opus? No, but that type of wine, but, but not Opus. Uh, I remember. It's Cuba Sanes, I think. But they, they took the same model too? Yeah, the winery has like the things go over the roof. Yeah. So when you see the winery, it's like a big business. So the ideas of that winery come from this winery, that winery. Wow. I would ever used to be my consultant my maker when I started here. I'm going to follow Wow. He started consulting. What's the man? Yeah, I thought that was a novel idea. So it's interesting to see the, the origins of it. When I saw it, La Postole and Montes doing the gravity. Ah, that's and super old, come on, from ever. <laughs> You <laughs> find wineries in the 18. Oh, oh. I found an, a winery. There's a winery in Australia that from 1920 that everything is gravity. You know, in California, of all the wineries I go to, I don't see that very often. No, because it's expensive. Yeah. It's easier to go up. <laughs> Quintessa. Quintessa winery. Okay. And you saw that it's like in, like in near the near the. It's like a, like they put it on on, on the on the yep. hillside, mm -hmm. yeah, and everything oh, yeah. comes from that, and it's like very small comes. The idea from from the roof comes from Contessa, ah, and the type of methane comes from like this place. It's the same type of yep, yep. Rating. So here we have all this. 
at the end you see that the, the open tops are bigger it will make some some of the pinot noirs you make the pinot noir for gray for Keulat and for reserva all the pinot noir areas at the end uh, and, we, and we, we don't have the, and there's a machine that we do pillage like that but this instead of that small it's a big one uh, okay over, over on the under if you see it's a very you know in summertime it will get warmer here so it's very good temperature so it's a yeah. very technical winery from yeah. the beginning we start thinking and making wine from the first process and having less problems first general. principles yeah yeah you know i found that with a lot of the winemakers i see out there doing a really good job is that's a recurring thing i'm seeing is get your technicals right at the up front and so you're not trying to fix a wine you're you know look look when you go to at the end when you make the wine you need to break and yeah. then the rest is a good thing it's not that fun. <laughs> I've heard that too. Really, really, <laughs> if it's a stainless steel or concrete or a wooden tank or a bin, yeah. really, if the grapes are good. Hey, nice work, you guys. You guys are doing really He's good. from Sacramento. He has his, his wine stuff. <laughs> yeah, I love you guys' wine. Big and fan. Oh, yeah, that's why I came down here. <laughs> Brian, mira, Loreto. Our tasting room where we always are on the floor with a lot of wine tasting. This side is where normally works Alejandro. So on that part, yeah. Angel works here, Deborah works here, and I work on the end. Yeah. This is how we think when we get to the team. Those are all things that we're always thinking, but we do always. And why, why, why? Yeah, Melanie. There's a wine that you don't know. Whoa. It's a, it's a Solera Vineyard Tara. We don't have it in the States. So the whole time I thought it was just the Chardonnay. So you've gone past the Chardonnay now. And we're going to release next year a Cabernet Franc and a Grenache. I wonder how that. That terroir comes through in the Pinot. You're gonna love the Pinot. Oh. Remember I told you yesterday, you liked it. Ooh, yeah. Like that. Wait until you try that. Oh yeah. man. <laughs> Whoa. Well, this is this is uh this is the the brain of the one here. All comes here. We have a huge TV, so. We did a lot, a lot of things uh, on the pandemia. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So you have Kenum? So you tasted the Chardonnay yesterday? Yes. Okay, so that. And here we are to the, the dream for the winemaker. So now, so here we're going to start first with a, this is the Chardonnay that goes for Grey Chardonnay. Uh, okay. The Grey Chardonnay okay. goes about 70% in barrels, okay, so, but more and more we've been having, the first white wine they decided to use in big vats, so we call them Poudre, was a uh, Grey Chardonnay. After. In the future, Tara Chardonnay starts to go to food also. Okay. But the first one to start to food as a white wine was as a trial with Chardonnay grain. So this, this is what it says. C8 means Chardonnay, 2, vintage 22, yeah. Casablanca, block 7. Mm, I never understood this code before. <laughs> that's, that's a very nice nose. Oh, man, Beautiful vintage 22. Yeah. One of, one of my preferred vintage yeah. 19, 22. It's got a nice, nice nectar on the nose. Mmm. 
good citrus. Yeah. Well, Casala, these are old vines. These are uh, not super old, but they're 20, 22 years old. Mm. Interesting, huh? Yeah. Tara. <laughs> Tara only uses small pulleries. Yeah. Instead of using those vats, those yeah. pulleries like that, yeah. we did this. This is talking with a friend. This is an Italian, yeah. the owner of Gamba, Mauro Gamba. Yeah. We were tasting here together because we have a lot of Italian ones. And, he's, and I was showing him that I had Tara in old barrels. Yeah. No pulleries yet. Mm -hmm. No coffee yet. The old days. Yeah. And I showed him, wow, oh, he was wow, beautiful. Yeah. He said, and I was just doing a trial of one of those for Tara. Come on, okay. Thank you. Okay, I was just ah. doing a trial for that. And then he said, yeah, and I'd like to work with Elise. He said, why don't you work? And he, he told me to do this. Yeah. And we said, oh yeah. He showed us that. I said, I have a guy in California or in South Africa, I don't remember, who's doing Chardonnay. He likes all the leaves together. Mm -hmm. Instead of having this way, why don't you put it this way? Why not? So yeah. that's why we brought it. So it's not our idea, it was the owner's idea of the pulleries who brought us in. And this is like five barrels. Wow. Or even less, not a meal. Yeah, no, like five barrels. But no oak influence because these are even this this is a French oak. Yep. Italian Cooper. Well they, they don't even call them Cooper, they're Botti, you know, these yeah. are just called Botti. Mm -hmm. um, very clear. <laughs> Say yeah, sorry. Say because we haven't moved yeah. it yet. Mm. This is twenty one. This is very neutral. Nice. Very mineral. Yeah, yep. Oh yeah. It's very clean. It's very clean. I love it. This also goes for Tara. This is the Sauvignon Blanc Tara. What do you think? Oh yeah, the Sauvignon Blanc. Okay. Tara. Mm -hmm. That was a powerful the, the, one. The, 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 the difference between look, what, what we have done in all the Taras, all the Taras that are a minimum, a minimum of two years of aging, yes. except Sauvignon Blanc. So instead of putting in that type of food, we put it in a bigger food because the bigger food gets less air. To maintain it even a little bit closer so we are always thinking and we're gonna have uh and we're gonna have also this in a concrete egg for so you want to start a full day, but not those ones in the future when we have a little bit more volume maybe, maybe we're gonna change but just a year uh, okay man the the minerality on this is so powerful the rocks it literally tastes like crushed yeah. rocks. I okay, mean, it smells just like... Because it is this one. It's amazing. So this is a different vineyard from the Chardonnay. Uh, no. No? It's the same? The same area? That's crazy that the expression, the rock expression in this is is far more intense than even the Chardonnay. Sauvignon Blanc normally so, so reflects the, more the terroir by itself. Chardonnay is always more Chardonnay. Yeah. Wow. That's a textbook mineral wine. Okay, so this vintage is... 22. 22. 22. And the, what, what we had yesterday was... 21. 21. Yeah. Our first vintage is 2020. This one is... A, yeah. Second vintage is 2021. That we won in the... the for Chile, we won the best. So in Blanc of Chile with Taro. The terroir is there. It's very primary. It's in your face. It's a little softer. Just a little softer. Then when we get the con the concrete egg in here, we have still we, because we just arrived, we had yeah. some issues, so they arrived recently. So we have part of Tara is still on the tank, mm -hmm. and it has to be here now. Wow. Okay, we're, we're just on the front. How many of these? Ten. Yeah, ten of them. Wow. Because what happens? We will have two vintages. 
Yeah. So we have 2021, 2022, and then for three years. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. So, okay. so I have uh, four towers that will go like that. So I need eight. Yeah. At least. And then I'm going to do now uh, a new Grenache, a new. Ooh, Grenache. And Cabernet Franc. We still don't have the volume to this, but I, I asked him first and. Um, we're also you put it over also you want to use one for Heru. So how do you how do you anticipate um, this is going to the wine is going to elevate in this? How do you how do you anticipate? Is it going to is it going to impart that terroir, more of that minerality or yeah. characteristics? I can't wait. It's, it's more neutral. It's more neutral but also it's a stone. Yeah. The, the good way about the concrete eggs yeah. is the, the same origin that the, that the grape. Yeah. So yeah. in addition, it's zero because you, you keep to age your yeah. wine yeah. in the same origin. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was just, uh, I don't know why I didn't think about it when he mentioned because I was like, oh yeah, the eggs would be cool. But I was thinking, just go buy them from, or ask someone to make some yeah. eggs for you. And he was like, no, 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 no. We're going to go take the rocks yeah. from the vineyard. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, that's the concept. The like concept. mind blown. To avoid to, we, we are we are trying with the with the eggs. It's trying to, to yeah. avoid the um, other um, influence play, influence of yeah. flavors and aromas of the other companies. So yeah. it's perfect. Yeah. I feel it's a real constante. It's the Sí, mira, very elegant barrel. It's the same wine, huh? This is a... This is a two-year-old barrel. But this is the second use of this barrel. So, new barrel, old, second use of this. Wow. Wow, there's very subtle differences between them. That had that had that had structure. This had a, a, a hint of a little more fruit and mushroom, and this one is yeah. I do this thing always very fast. Yep. I, yep. Okay. Yeah. But then, but then, it's too slow. Come on. This I need to do today anyway. So I have to take it. Until today, Monday, I have to take it. The Grand Moro. So this is a new barrel. The Grand Moro. This is the female selection. This is an NXLO. So this is a medium low toast. Each brand has a different view. I love the power. Yeah. All of these are top out. That's an extremely it small is batch. Solera. So this is a Solera. Edition number three is from vintage 2011 until we are now five twenty two. This is five twenty until twenty seven. <coughs> so it will be eleven vintages in a bottle, but it's a Solera. So we have two barrels, two barrels, two barrels, two barrels, two barrels. At the beginning, we were releasing less to maintain and to do the bigger Solera. So this is only. One, uh, 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 one barrel of 300 liters that made 398 bottles. So that, this is why all, even from the barrel that is from the beginning, the 2011 barrel, yeah. all, we have never moved the lease of the barrels. So there is a barrel that has 11 years of lease. <laughs> I love that. We've never released the lease. And as we do, of course, we take a little bit of, of the damn one. So from 2022, it goes to 2021, 2021, 2020, 2019, and that's how it's also better. 
But it's a solera. Normally the solera has a biological, they're a little bit lower, they have a, a biological, um, what do you say? Uh, a leona. Yeah, yeah, but they have the typical, like the, yeah. the Spanish solera, they have, the, they have this type of thing, thin layer that is oh, with, with, with the yeast mm -hmm. that keep the, the wine yeah. with no oxidation. But here we do, we do a full solera, so the barrel is full and we don't want oxidation in the barrel. So we were, normally solera has this biological thing, we don't do it, we want to maintain the character of the place. So it's our own style of solera. So it's clearly on the Viognier that Atacama, I mean, the terroir is very bold. So it's clearly coming through, but it's a little more muted, just like with the Chardonnay, maybe even more so. Not like the Sauvignon Blanc. The Sauvignon Blanc, it's, whoa, it's in your face. It's like, a, okay. it's, a, it's a concrete wall. Yeah, concrete wall, uh, absolutely. And, but this- I think for the future with Sauvignon Blanc, we're yeah. gonna go 100% concrete tank. But we have to, we're always, we're looking. So, yeah. but I think if I look at my view, I think that with, so you blank, but we have to see because I do like the, the, the so it's maybe going to take, but, but maybe one day or maybe one day, I think Tara's going to keep evolving and maybe one day we'll do the Tara blend and then we'll do like the small concrete bit. You know, with with uh, Viognier, it's so easy for it to run away and be this very aromatic, fruity, honeysuckle yeah. type of wine. Um, and I, if anything, I think. I think it benefits the most. I think it benefits the most from uh, this region because you have it's pulled all that back. It's not as aromatic, fruity, well, and this is like twelve point five alcohol. Yeah, it is like nice, bold acidity, good tension. But you have to, you still have that Viognier body, it's very soft and a little yeah. thick. Um, I like and it. And also because remember, it's all in these. This, yeah, everything's yeah. on leaves. Don't we don't move the leaves? We move the leaves only once a year. Before we do the blend, we move all the solera barrels. Wow. So we do we don't overwork the leaves. What vintage is this then? No vintage. Third oh. edition. That means the first vintage was seven vintages. Okay. So, 2011, 2012, 2013, 14, 15, Seven 16, years, 17. seven vintages went by. So, they and all came, you, they you were just two. adding them on? Yeah, so wow. two barrels. Now we have three barrels, but at the beginning it was two barrels. And then this is the third edition. So this has 10 vintages in this blend. The first was 2011. Wow. Oh, I see what you're saying. So this is going to be a continuation indefinitely yeah. just marching slowly into the future. <laughs> this is the craziest wine we have done. Think about that. Right. <laughs> the, the oldest barrels is refilling yeah, this is the newest. The next, the next, the next. Yeah, the, the next, two, next. 11, we took a little bit of 11. But when we did the first vintage, all the, all the, 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 the barrels were 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So we had seven, seven vintages. So what we did the first time, Solera. What is Solera? Have you ever had a Solera wine? Do you know a winemaker who makes a Solera wine? I would very much like to know. This was my first time, I must admit, hearing about this process. I find it very interesting. I left my tour and tasting with Felipe with more questions and answers. I suppose that's what I was looking for. Our 2022 Winemaker of the Year did not disappoint. With thought-provoking projects that span decades and a lifetime, it was a real treat to visit with Felipe and Ventisquero Wines. I'd like to thank Catalina and Angel and the entire team of Ventisquero for hosting me and I can't wait to get down to Chile again to continue exploring your story. Thank you so much. <laughs>